artist and welcome back to today's video as always you can skip the intro and go straight to the tutorial to see what's up with it okay so in today's video we're gonna visit the thing that has been requested the most out of you guys from like months so in today's video we're gonna see how to make hair in XGen everything from setting up a project to importing your assets in the scene with the right scale and finally all the modifiers at least the most important ones to create your marvelous haircut so without further ado guys let's just jump right into the video and see how to make your wonderful hair okay so now that i have maya opened here the first thing that i want to do is create a project file so in order to do that we're going to file go down to project window once you have clicked on it a little window is going to appear which is to set up the name and your saving location so like i said first thing we're going to change is the name of the project so to do that let's simply click on new and then we're going to be able to change the name of our current project which i'm going to name michael underscore hair which is the name of the character and what the file is about then if you click on the location you can change it and once that's done you can click on accept once a project has been created let's just bring the head mesh in maya and if you have one you can also bring the hair mesh you have sculpted for the character as it can be useful as a reference. Everything is now loaded, but if I zoom out of the character, you can actually tell that the head is pretty small in comparison to the grid. So in order to check if everything, the measurements are all right, let's just start by going onto Windows, then Setting and Preferences, and then Preferences. Once you've clicked on it, a window is going to appear. Let's go in the settings section and right there we can see that the grid is in centimeter, which is good. And if you want, you can change it by clicking on the little arrow. The second step I'm actually going to take is just to load up a cube in my scene. So every unit in this scene equals to one centimeter. So obviously no heads in real life are only one centimeters. So after a small research on Google, I can actually tell that a head is about 54 centimeters to 57. So what I would like to do is basically take the in-between values and use it in Maya. So now that I'm back in Maya, I'm going to write 55 as a unit for the cube as a reference for the head's supposed size. If I now put the cube in a wireframe mode, you can actually tell that the cube is pretty big and way bigger than the head. So it's important that we bring the head to about the same scale so that when working in XGen, the values work best and everything works to its full potential. So I'm just going to do a group with each element of the head so that the new scales affect everything equally and does not move on its own gizmo. Once we're done with the cube, we can actually delete it. And right after that, let's select the group we did with the head and the hair mesh and rename it with the new scale we gave the head. This way, if we want to re-import something else from ZBrush, such as the eyes, I will know what units to put them to make it the right scale. What I'm doing at the moment is simply rename the assets I have in my outliner to work more efficiently and when I'm done, I'm simply duplicating the head in order to create the sculpt for XGen. You can duplicate simply by clicking on Ctrl D. The next step we're going to take is to create a layer for each mesh. This is not necessary when working in XGen, but it does help a lot when, for instance, you want to hide a mesh quickly or view a mesh without being able to select it. All right, so simply select a mesh and go to your right, click on layers, then create layers from selected. Then double click on the new layer it will have created for you and name it however you want. Although I do suggest you give it about the same name as the mesh you chose, but not exactly just because Maya won't allow two objects with the same nomenclature. You can then repeat the same process for each asset that you have. Let's move on to creating a proper scalp. The scalp is the mesh we will use in order to create the hair in XGen. 
So we will have to delete all of the faces where we do not want to see the hair. We obviously will be using the new duplicated head name sculpt. You can use whatever method works for you at this point to select faces, either by the lasso tool or paint and select. Note that it's way better to have more faces than needed than less because you can always create a mask to control the areas with hair. In order to do that, as you can see, I like to keep my hair blocking mesh visible but set to transparency with the layers to have an idea of where to keep the faces. Once you're done selecting all of the faces, just click on Ctrl I, which will invert the selection and hit delete. Once that's done, we are simply going to clean up the mesh by clicking on edit, delete by type and history, and then modify and freeze transformation. Now the next thing I want to show you guys is how to use the blocking mesh in order to create guides for XGen. The first step in that direction is to click on the tool symbol, load shelf and find paint effects. I already have it loaded up but once you find it just click on open and you should have it amongst all of your other shelves. The second thing is we are going to make the hair blocking mesh paintable. So select the concerned mesh and then let's create UVs. No need to do something perfect, a simple automatic UV is just good enough. Finally, click on the following symbol while selecting the hair mesh to make it, like I said, paintable. The third and last step is to use the paint effect tool and simply draw some line on the mesh. As a result, the painted line is following the mesh's flow. So you can create a ton of lines this way to be used later in XGen system. Once you have created all of the guidelines you wanted, let's convert them into curves by going to modify, convert, then click on paint effect to curves. At this point, you could delete all of the paint effects you did and then select all of your curves in the viewport and create one group with all of them together so that your outliner looks cleaner. If we now select our curved guide and look at its points by clicking on right mouse button and then click on control vertex, you see that there is probably too many subdivision for the shape it's trying to achieve and it's making it look kind of nosy. So, we could probably make those curves look smoother and reduce the amount of control points. So to do that, I'm simply going to click the curve tab and hover my mouse around the square next to smooth. This way I can reset if needed the information and smooth it as much as I want to by changing the number. After that, I'm reducing the amount of point by again going to the curve tab click rebuild and then put a number of point I'd like to have for each curve. Once I apply this, you will be able to see that the amount of subdivision has been reduced and it also looks much smoother than it was before. Once this is done, we are now going to have to make the first point of each curve we want to use touch the scope of the head. The reason being is that if we do not do that, it can actually cause some problem when converting those curves into guides in XGen. So to do that, we first want to select the head sculpt and make it as alive by clicking again on the little magnet on top. Then by selecting the curve, you right click on your mouse and select control vertex. The first CV is the one that has a square as a point. Now that it has been selected, all you have left to do is move a little bit with the gizmo and it will instantly snap to the scalp. Now we're finally going to open XGen for the first time. To have XGen as a default, you can simply change the workspace to XGen. Then our next step is simply to select our sculpt and create a description by going on the XGen tab and click on create a description. 
Now a window with a lot of options is going to appear. If you want, you can take your time and read everything as it's pretty simple to understand. But for today's video, we will touch just a few things. The first one being the name of our description. This is simply what you want to call whatever part of the hair you're working on. So let's say for instance, you had a hairstyle with a ponytail. Description one could be the ponytail and description two could be the scalp. For my case, since this is a pretty simple hair we're doing, I'll have it all in the same description, called base hair. The second thing is the name of our collection. The collection is where you will find all of your description. So in that you can simply put the name of your character. And the last thing we want to change is control primitive by placing and shaping guides. This way we can easily place our own guides by clicking on the sculpt. Now that our X-Gen description has been set, let's convert those curves we worked so hard on into guides. I go on my X-Gen tab, which has, I know, a lot of intimidating information, which we will get to later, and go to your Utilities tab, then Curve to Guides. While all your curves in the viewport are selected, uncheck Delete Curves in the Curve to Guide option. You could keep them check too, but not that this will delete your curves instantly when converting them as guides. And I prefer to keep them as backup since we're working in Maya. If we apply this, boom, our curves are now guides. Let me hide the curves now by clicking on H with the keyboard. And now if we preview the hair by clicking on the eyeball above the XGen tab, we can see that it's all looking pretty messy right now. And that's because for one, we don't have any modifiers and for two, probably not enough subdivisions. Okay, so let's remove the hair by clicking on the closed eye next to the open one. And let's start by creating a mask which will allow us to remove hair where we do not want it to be. Let's do that by clicking on the little arrow under density and create a map. A window will then appear asking us if we would rather start with a black or white canvas and what the name of our mask will be. Now I forgot to rename the mask here but I highly suggest you do change it. Then I like to start with a black canvas which equals to no hair and paint in white the areas where I do want to have hair. All right, so now we are in the painting mode, but before we draw any strokes on our mesh, I'm simply going to click on the little symbol on the left, which is for all the attributes of our painting strokes. So if I double click on it, you will see a few options, one of them being the color of our stroke, which I will put to white so that when I paint, I can actually create a mask for the hair. Now I'm going to speed up the process here, but one thing you could also do in order to paint your mask, or I should say help you paint the mask, is view your block mesh you have created in order to see where you were supposed to have hair and where not. Now when you think you're happy with your mask, you can simply go back into your XGen tab and click on the little disc here in order to save your mask and apply it on the XGen. Right after that, I want to add modifiers to my hair just so that they follow better the guides I have created and have a better idea of the overall look. I always like to start with the clump modifier. Once you have added the clump, the next move is to click on Setup Maps. A window will then appear, basically asking you if you want the hair clump to follow the guides you have created or to be set randomly across the surface. For our first clump, I like to set it to Guide. After saving, you will see that the hair looks like anime, but no worries, we will actually change those values. And now, if we go back to the first tab in our XGen, uh, we could actually change the density and add more just to have a better idea of the final result. Next, if we go back to our modifier, the clump one, you can see that there is actually a curve. Now, this curve tells whether the hair follow closely the guides or not. The more up 
this curve is, the more it will separate from the guide and the more down it is, it will actually be as close as possible to the guide. So as you can see, when I bring this up, it will actually separate from the guide itself. The second modifier I would like to add is the cut one. This will basically add variety to the length of the hair. So you will notice that in Xgen there is a lot of trial and error. Xgen is basically trial and error actually. I might do something that works for me, but not for you. So it's your job to test those numbers out and change them if needed. Like here, I'm changing the cut amount until I'm satisfied. Finally, so the hair feels more alive, I will add in a noise modifier. The frequency is how much noise you want in the strand hair, and the magnitude is actually how intense you want the noise to be. Now that I have the three main modifiers for the hair, the next step I'd like to take is just change the properties of the hair itself, such as the width and the numbers of subdivision. In order to do that, I'm simply going to click on the first tab of Xgen. Alright, so the first thing that I want to do is change the amount of CV count for the hair. Now what this basically is, is the amount of subdivision the hair will have. So this will basically make the hair more curvy instead of having hard edges. If I can give you guys an example with the guide itself, if I click on guide control point, you can see that there are little points that will basically tell how curvy or uh, the amount, like I said, of subdivision that it will have. And if I drag one of the points, you can see that the edges are pretty harsh. Now, this translates the same way with the hair itself. So again, if I change this amount to something like, let's say 15 or 35, you can see that the hair now is much more curvy, much more defined than it used to be. If we look at this around, if I put it back to five, you can tell that it's much straighter and it doesn't follow the guide of the curve as much. Now the second thing I'd like to do with the hair is change its width because obviously hair isn't that thick. So in order to do this, again, we're going back into Xgen and changing the width to something around 0.02 to 0.05. When you're around that number, you're about the right width for hair. And then you can basically change the areas of the hair where you want it thicker and where you want it thinner. For instance, what I personally like to do is have the root of the hair a little bit thinner, uh, the middle part of the hair where it's like bigger, and then usually the end part a little bit back to thinner width. The last thing that we can do before adding more guides is simply to add more density of the hair, just so that it covers better the head sculpt now that it's thinner. Alright guys, so at this point, all I'm doing is adding more guides to the head sculpt just so that the hair covers the entire head. Uh, what you can see is that I'm using my hair blocking mesh in order to guide me and place the guides where it needed to be and also shape them in the correct way. All I'm using is the guide control point and also the move tool in the Xgen tab. So again, since this is all I'm doing, I'm gonna skip that part and see you once all of my guides have been placed. Okay, now that I have all of my guides on the sculpt, the first thing that I wanna do is go back to my modifiers after viewing the hair, of course, and I'm basically going to have to redo my clumping. So basically by clicking on the first clumping, going to set up maps, I'm just going to click again on the guide and then save, just so that all of my other guides that have been added are taken into account. After playing again with the curves of the first clumping and being satisfied with them, the second thing that I wanna do is add another clumping. But this time, instead of using the guide option, we're now going to click on generate. After that, all you have to do is decide how much density you would like to have, which are basically the little spikes that you see on the skull. And I like to start with something low, just so that if I want to add another clumping guide, I can add a bigger amount. Now, I'll just click on save so that you can see the effect it's going to get 
the hair. If I now zoom in the hair, you can see that they are clumping spikes within the bigger clump, which is the one from the guiding clumping. And this is basically where it's kind of hard for me to tell you what you can do to have the better result because depending on the haircut you would like to achieve, the numbers are going to be different. So at this point, guys, all I'm going to say is really to test out the numbers, try to move the curve, change the amounts and see what works the best for you. I really think that XGen is all about trial and error. Alright guys, so as you can see, I have added a few clumping guides now again by going into my setup maps and then clicking on a different density and then generate just to add a little bit more life to my hair and variety one thing that i almost forgot mentioning to you guys are the modifiers within the clumpings so up until this point what we've been doing is clicking on this plus sign and adding modifiers that are in this window right another way that you can add variety and modifiers within your hair is in the clumpings. So as you can see here, I'm clicking on clumping number three and I have copy, cut, noise effect, frame, flatness, offset and curl. The one that I'm mainly using are the cut, the noise and the curl effect. As you can tell, the names are pretty similar to the ones you can find in this window but the main difference is that they will only act within the clumping guide. Let me give you guys an example. Let's go over here to the curl effect, which as you can see, I already have a number, which is one. Let me put it to two or let's say five, just to see a big effect going on. And now let's take this point and bring it up. I don't know if it's pretty visible, but a few hair are not affected by the curling effect. Those are pretty straight and those on the side are curly. This is because they are not within the clumping guides. If I bring it back to one, you will see the same thing again. Those hair are straight and some of them become curly because once again, they are part of the clumping. If I do bring it back to normal and instead add a coral modifier which is basically the same thing as the curl one in the clumps as you can tell it will affect the entire hair so let me just give you guys a bigger number so again you can see the difference as you can see no hair is left straight everything has been affected all the hair is curly now once again guys with an xgen it's all trial and error see what works best for you for the haircut you're trying to achieve and what's really nice is that you can always remove an effect by clicking on the little checker next to the modifiers and see whether you liked it or not and finally if you want to save your scene it's really important that when you go on the file you don't click on save scene click on save scene as that's really important so that all the modifiers, the maps, everything gets to be saved within the project window you have created. Okay guys, so the last thing I wanted to show you is how to transform the hair you did into geometry so you can send your hair into other software such as Marmoset in order to render them. All right, so the first thing we want to do is go into generate and then click on convert XGen primitives to polygon. Now, once you've clicked on this, a window is going to appear. Now, I'm just going to reset everything so I have the exact same options unchecked and checked and so that it's going to be easier for you to follow. Okay, so the first thing I want to check is combine mesh. Now, this is basically going to combine every single hair follicle into one geometry instead of having everything separate. And so it's also going to make the transform or I should say the convert time much more faster. The second thing I want to talk to you guys about is insert spams along with. So basically, numbers of spam is the number of geometry you're gonna have like it says along the spams so let me just give you guys an example with a little doodle 
So let's say that this is the hair. If you add one hair span, then you're gonna have one line like this along. If you have two, then another one. So it's basically going to smooth out the hair a little bit uh, along its length. Now if we go into curvature, as the name says, it's basically the curve of the hair. So again, if you had zero curvature, you would basically have a plane. But if I add one, then it's basically going to do something like this. So it's basically a plane that is that has a little bit of curvature. Now this drawing is a little bit bad, but I think you know what I'm talking about at this point. Okay, and then there are other options, but I don't like to play with them. They are just fine as they are. And once you're good, you can click on convert. Okay guys, so this is what the hair will look like and once you have converted your XGen into geometry and once you have your hair you can simply select it then go into file and export the selection and now if I add the hair to my scene in Marmoset ta-da! I have my character with hair that's beautiful and shiny from XGen maybe one last note I can give to you guys in order to have like good looking hair don't forget to select I mean uncheck callback faces so that everything is visible to the camera when rotating around the character. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope you appreciate it because I did spend a lot of time on this. If you like this video or if you learned anything from it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any suggestions, like really any suggestions on what my next video should be about. You're the masters of this channel and I'm just listening to you guys. So next video might be your idea, who knows. Finally, don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see more videos like this. And you can follow me on my social media if you just want to see what projects I'm working on, what I'm doing, anything like it. I also have a Discord, so if you want to have some feedback on your current projects, join it, it's free. And finally, if you do want to support me a little step further, you can check out my coffee and I also have a Patreon as well as a Gumroad. So on my Gumroad, you can find all of the files that I have used in today's video. On Patreon, it's a great way to support me and get something in return. So go check it out to see my tiers. I'm sure there's at least one thing that could be interesting to you guys. And if you're feeling really generous, you can check out my coffee. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye guys.